Hello, welcome to Gemstone Tarot, Thursday the 4th of March 2021. And we're going straight in. I know, we haven't done that for a while. Check out your March readings, but also check out the community tab. I've been using that a lot lately. And it is on the homepage. So if you go on the homepage of Gemstone Tarot, it will say something like home, videos, playlists about community. Hit the community tab and that's where I post photos of bits and bobs around the house. I don't know, stuff that's going on, things that I've seen. Also, I've been holding a few polls on there, just asking you about your star signs and stuff like that, just so I can find out more about you. I know. Have a look, check it out. It's been really fun actually. Okay, we're using Tarot of the 78 Doors and locks and keys and chains. Dun, 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 dun. Love shuffling these. They're really perky. The set in the we're wearing the unicorn jumper because there's not much time left for wearing unicorn jumpers. You know, we're getting more into spring here. So I'm just getting probably the last wear of the season. Yes, it's actually quite cold, but very sunny. Oh, great, okay. <laughs> Straight out with the Seven of Swords. Woohoo! I don't know if you've noticed, but all the readings this week have had a slightly scratchy vibe to them, haven't they? Sometimes them's the cards. Okay. Just looking for the crows, but they're not there today. Oh. Okay. That's, that's weird. Literally, when I said they're not there today, it flew across and just landed on the chimney pot. Hello, crow. High priestess. Excellent. Alrighty. It's going to be one of those days. Oof. All we need now is Voodoo Granny, don't we, to complete the set. <laughs> That's cool. That's a dream I don't want to come true. Right, okay. Seven of Swords. Hmm. Who crosses me, I think, is the vibe that I'm getting. Alongside it, I get a card that I very often pull with the Seven of Swords, and it's a card I'm looking for. It's the Five of Swords. Now here, I don't understand, really. There's... I mean, I do understand there's a door and it's been grown over and this person can't kind of access it even though they should be able to. Um, the traditional card for the Five of Swords, which is Venus in Aquarius. So I'm just adjusting my seat, my creaky seat. Um, the traditional thing is that you've got a guy going around a battlefield and um, people have had fights and he hasn't and he goes along and he picks up the swords and he kind of holds it aloft in a real, woohoo, I won, even though he didn't really take part. So there's a certain detachedness, which is what Venus in Aquarius is about, actually. If you have Venus in Aquarius, you can be, and I say this because I have Venus in Aquarius, you can be somewhat detached or you can seem detached about relationships. Okay. Five of Swords, it's passive aggressive in a way, but it's also like a game of chess that somebody is placing things, choosing things, choosing not to say things, um, holding things back. I suppose we could put this under the umbrella of gentle manipulation, okay? I've got the Emperor in the middle and the Emperor is the card of the father of the tarot, but in this case, I'm getting more of a vibe to do with, it could be issues to do with the father of the family, because we also have the five, I'm not doing reversals actually today, so just let me, it doesn't make much difference, but I still don't wanna do it. Five of Pentacles at the bottom. This is one of the most miserable cards in this whole deck. I don't know why, but it reminds me of, um, and let me know if you remember this. 
It reminds me of being a school child in the 80s. And in the UK, we had teacher strikes. So um, there was no one to look after us at lunchtime. So we had to go home. And I remember daytime TV in my lunch hour when I was eating a cheese and pickle sandwich. I remember that too. Um, Branston pickle, still love that stuff. And we used to watch really bad daytime soap operas. Some of them were Australian. Can I say sons and daughters? Okay. Yeah, any of you that remember that. Um, and of course the quality was really, really grainy and the sets were really dark. And there was another one as well about being in the army and there was one called Crown Court. Anyway, it reminds me of that. I was a strange child. I was a Pisces with Pisces rising child. So I think I picked up on a lot of things like that. I was like, hmm, there is a sense of ennui about daytime television as I'm eating my cheese and pickle sandwich. Ennui, five of pentacles. Dark abandonment, okay, let's get into it. Dark abandonment. A sense of abandonment by the father for some of you. I mean, that's something that's in here. And I don't know why that kind of resonates in the situation that you're in, but for some of you it does. For others of you, it's a sense of control or a lack of it, the, or who has it, okay? The emperor is obviously quite controlling in a sense, which can be positive in that if you were an emperor, you had an empire or you had to rule certain things, it's not an easy job, you know, and you've got to organize this and do that and tell people to do that and sometimes back it up by force. Okay, that's what traditionally emperors have done. On the downside to that, of course, is power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. I can't remember who said that and if you know it, leave it in the comment section. There's a sense here of who's holding the reins because in some ways you think you're holding the reins but somebody in the background is doing a five of swords. They may be claiming credit for your work. They may be taking something from you with that seven of swords but it's very subtle. And sometimes when people are taking from you, they seem like they're giving to you. It's that kind of double crossy slightly energy that I get from this. And you will know that if you watch me regularly, that I don't often get that kind of, you know, shady kind of energy, but I am getting a bit of shady kind of energy. After the seven of swords or in between the seven and the five, we've got this high priestess. High Priestess is you and your ability to, in a sense, work things out in a very internal way, sense what's happening, but also it's about your relationship with your intuition. So how do you view your own intuition? Do you trust it? Do you fear it? Does it irritate you? Because there's something about your intuition here that I feel could you could really work with. And I'm just noticing the overall energy card is the Empress. So the Empress is the mother. We've got an Empress and an Emperor. Divine counterparts, but also parents. I'm not ignoring the parents vibe there is something, yeah, we've got the nine of wands, defending yourself. Somebody wants you to defend yourself because it will distract you from the truth. That literally came out of nowhere. So that might just be for one person. This could be literally a family row or argument, but also it could be about a relationship because we've got an emperor and an empress. There is a need, we have also the Six of Swords, which is to escape, to find a way out. I don't think that's you escaping. I think that's someone else using um, distraction. You know, look over there and then <laughs> quick, <laughs> that sort of thing. That was what I used to do in hide and seek. I used to hide myself and think if I couldn't see anybody, they couldn't see me. Another Pisces child problem. But anyway, okay. So there is something in the ether. It's about string pulling. It's about control. You might ask yourself, 
whether you had to pull stunts to get your parents' attention, that is in the mix too, okay? It feels a bit like that. Then we've got the Knight of Pentacles, patience, being in it for the long game, and to be honest as well, not biting. If this person is throwing shade your way, as the kids say, I don't even know if the kids do say that anymore, but if they do, if this person is doing that, biting probably isn't going to help. Yes, mending. The oracle card we get is mending. Mending. Keeping people out or keeping people in? That's that Robert Frost thing about building a wall, isn't it? Are you keeping people out or are you keeping people in? And the fates, that is your High Priestess card. Some of this is kind of destiny. Do you remember yesterday we got justice? And some of this is true. There is a need here to somehow stay true to yourself, but also not to get triggered by old fears of abandonment that somebody else is playing into, okay? Leave me a comment if you can and let me know if that resonates with you, okay? And I'll see you tomorrow. Namaste.